Hey you guys, Yulia here. So in this video I will be repotting uh, the bulbs that I have been forcing in prettier pots like this. And these bulbs have been in their chill period for the uh, last couple of months, but I took them out uh, a couple of weeks ago and they are all budded up, they're ready to bloom, and I am ready to display them around the house. And the reason why I force these bulbs in plastic containers is because of the flexibility that it gives me. Um, because I never know how I want to display my forced bulbs if I'm going to have them somewhere around the house or maybe outside in the outdoor containers or directly in the ground. Um, also, plastic containers are a lot lighter. Um, and I force a lot of bulbs and moving around uh, terracotta pots with the soil, with the bulbs, is definitely a lot harder than uh, plastic pots. So I have a number of beautiful terracotta pots here, including uh, my favorite Berg's pots. And I'm going to make um, arrangements with the hyacinths, crocuses, and irises that are pretty much ready to bloom. And my idea is to place them around this plant room and create um, sort of a flower show. I'm also thinking about embellishing the top of these pots with some moss that I have uh, growing out in the garden um, and also maybe um, some branches. So I'm using a regular potting uh, soil mix to replant these. And uh, a lot of people are nervous to repot uh, bulbs that are in this stage, but this is a perfect stage to repot forced bulbs. Any bigger and uh, they may flop. I have replanted uh, bulbs in full bloom and it was fine. There was some floppage going on. <laughs> so this is definitely a better stage. So the way I do it is just kind of gently thread my fingers and you can see healthy root system right here and normally this will all hold together because they're nicely rooted place them in the pot and fill in around the root ball There is uh, one bulb that is a little stunted, but I think it will recover. And generally with for forced bulbs, the quality of your flowers really depends on the quality of your bulbs. The bigger <clears throat> and healthier the bulb is, the more beautiful your display is. This one is done. Let me show you the next case. I have these three bulbs here. However, two did not make it. You see one is also kind of crooked, but these barely rooted, they are just rotted away and there is no growth. They're really mushy. And that happens uh, usually from overwatering. This has roots, but they are really translucent. So they look like they were rotting as well. So I'm going to discard these bulbs. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to plant this one little thing in this small pot. Just gently turn over and get rid of the soil on this side. Yeah, I think I overwatered this pot. And that is the thing with forcing bulbs. They need really good drainage. And when you are forcing bulbs, Make sure you start watering the pots only when you are sure that the bulbs are rooted. Otherwise, they'll just rot away. Okay, so this little guy, I know he's a little crooked, but I will place them, I'll place them against the window this way and it'll straighten out. Looks like a bird. <laughs> it's cute. Let me move these out of the way because I have a very large container coming next. All right, so I have 30 hyacinths here and I'm going to attempt 
and plant them all into this uh, big container here. First, I need to add a little bit more soil on the bottom. Look at this healthy root system. Isn't it beautiful? Okay, so I fit three pots in here, but uh, what I'm going to do next may scare some people, but I will try to do this. I'm going to split this pot in two and place half here and maybe another half over here. And that is perfectly fine as long as the root system is healthy, you could do this. I'm going to use a knife for it. Kind of, kind of like a cake. There you go. They're all the same color uh, hyacinths, so I think it would be gorgeous. This is better. Maybe scooch this one over here. Yeah, a little bit more to the center. Nice. I think it's going to be spectacular when they bloom. I don't know if you could see it. I actually mounded it a little bit in the middle. Um, and I'm going to collect moss from the garden next to cover up all the soil. First of all, it looks pretty and it actually helps with soil uh, from flowing all over the place. All right, you guys, I think these are all planted. I made a giant mess, which is okay. Um, so next um, thing I'm going to do is collect some moss uh, from the garden. So here's our moss farm, and this is the northern exposure of our garden, right behind the forsythia hedge. And what I used to do is mulch this area, and it kept moss at bay, but then I fell in love with moss. I stopped mulching, and it just started growing like crazy. So I don't know if you guys remember, I already collected a bunch of moss from this area for my Christmas decor, but it grew back very quickly. That was about two months ago, and um, it's almost entirely back. All right, before I lay the moss down, I'm going to water this entire composition to make sure that the soil is settled and the bulbs are happy. A lot of times people ask me, what about the bugs when I collect the moss? So around this time of year, I wouldn't worry about it. But if you collect moss in um, spring or fall, you can place it in the garage for 24 hours uh, to be safe. And in, in that time, all of the critters that were in it uh, will just leave. They do not like to be disturbed. But right now in the winter, I really wouldn't worry about this.
to show you the moss spheres that I made for Christmas decor. They are loving it outside. As you can see, they're growing over nicely. I love this already, and I think uh, when these hyacinths bloom, it's going to be gorgeous. Um, now, if you don't have moss in your garden, uh, because your climate is not as hospitable to moss as mine, uh, we do get a lot of rainfall and it's pretty humid here. You can get preserved moss and preserved moss looks um, almost as good as the real thing. And you can make arrangements like this and even um, moss spheres like this and they will look just wonderful. All right, so the next project that I want to do is to make some sort of um, wreath slash uh, nest for one of these hyacinth arrangements because I think this one has <laughs> everything that it needs already. So here's what I'm trying to do, is to make um, some sort of a nest on the perimeter of this pot. Um, and everybody does it differently, but the easiest way that I found to do it is to use a pot uh, of proper size and then use it as um, a form to shape the nest. Uh, so what I'm going to do next is just layer the birch branches and uh, secure them with uh, floral wire. All right, you guys, the nest is done and I love it. It is so charming and um, sort of free flowing and natural and definitely imperfect, uh, just the way I like it. I actually think that this could make a really good wreath as well, except for the parts that are sticking out. I would definitely cut them down because I don't want uh, people to get hurt as they walk by with these branches. Um, and maybe add some moss where I have the floral wire to make it a little bit, a little bit softer. I also love that the catkins um, are coming out already on the birch, so I would leave those for sure. But this arrangement almost um, is easily transitioned into Easter. You could just add some chicks or some eggs, and there you go. It's just perfect. Um, anyway, I think this is it as for the arrangements for today. I have been forcing bulbs ever since I was a teenager and I've forced many, many bulbs, made a lot of mistakes forcing them and learned a lot in the process. But it is just such a wonderful activity around this time of the year because the garden season is approaching, but we're not there yet. And I think something like this um, definitely keeps me be, uh, busy. And also seeing blooms and buds come in like this brings me so much joy. And out of all the years that I've forced bul uh, bulbs, I think this is the most bulbs I've ever forced. I actually have a lot more in the basement. Those are mostly tulips because tulips require a little bit of a longer chill period. So I am taking those out in about a week. So that will be my second wave of blooms. But these particular hyacinths, irises, and crocuses that I have here today will bloom probably in a week and a half, maybe two weeks. So I will place them everywhere uh, here in the plant room and um, enjoy my flower show. <laughs> Anyway, thank you so much, you guys, for watching. Um, I hope you try forcing bulbs and definitely make a note in your calendar for September to get some uh, good quality bulbs for forcing. 
and then plant them somewhere in October to have them uh, blooming around this time of the year. Thank you so much, you guys, for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, learned something new, and I will see you in the next one.